Um, basically, the files here are already set up for you. So we have, um, I'm gonna make this bigger just in case you guys can see. Uh, we have a product, we have a home view and we have a product detail view and nothing has been started yet. Uh, we have assets and we have assets in two places. Um, we have images and icons that we're gonna use are in the asset folder. When I prototype, I always put my assets in the preview assets. So the shoes in particular are coming from there. So if you go into the asset folder and you're looking for the shoes, they're located in the preview assets and not in the regular assets. And the reason for this is when you um, export or when you submit your app to the app store, the preview assets don't get included in the project. So it keeps your file size down. So if you have a lot of preview assets and you just want to display them locally, this is how you would do it. So that's why it's set up. Um, our colors are all set up here too. And honestly, this screen is very small. Let me uh, change my system preferences really quick so that you guys can see um, the display better. Cause right now I feel like it's really tiny and I don't like the size. So sorry. Uh, General, where am I going? Um, much better. Okay, that's there. And I want to also open up my um, keyboard shortcut so you can see those as I work. Okay, so as I did in the last live stream, all of my shortcuts will appear at the very top. So anytime I do something with control or spacebar or any of these special characters, you'll see those appear at the top. So in case you're wondering how I got there, um, as I usually say, control, control shift O is my favorite. It allows me to open new files quickly without having to use the folder. Uh, I'm gonna close the folder for now and I'm gonna open up home detail view. I'm sorry, home view. And we're gonna start there. Let's close. I'm sorry, we're gonna actually start in main and we're gonna work on the um, navigation portion of this first. So that way that's all set up before we get started in the detail. So the first thing that we wanna do in, um, in main is fix the um, navigation. Con nav we wanna make sure that this is in the nav controller or in a nav view. So we're gonna work on that first. We also wanna display if in the designs we have um, some icons on the right hand side, we also wanna do that as well. So those are the two main things that I wanna work on for the start. And I gotta just start getting one more thing done before I can go and then we can get started, sorry. Okay, so. So the first thing we want to do is we want to embed our our uh, home view inside of navigation view. So you can command click on the item and we can for now just say embed in Z stack and then just change it to navigation view. So that puts it in the navigation view. And then we also want to embed this into a Z stack. So we're going to go ahead and command click on it and embed in Z stack. So now we have this embedded into a Z stack. And if we run it, we're not really gonna see anything, but we'll just see some text on the screen. If preview wants to cooperate today. Okay, so we have that started. Navigation view is in. Um, now what we wanna do is we wanna add a background. So we can add the background to the, to the Z stack and we can say dot background and we're going to use color dot base bg color all right uh one thing i didn't cover a ton is the colors and themes are all in here 
So we have every color and all of the colors are already set up for dark mode and light mode. So if you're looking for colors, um, I always use base as the start. And then um, when you're doing theming, the easiest way that I've found is to is to name the component that or whatever you're using specifically. The reason I do it this way instead of doing like primary color, secondary color is sometimes certain situations you have to deviate from that. And so primary color ends up being you have to create a ton of them um, anyways. Um, and it doesn't give you flexibility here. Um, I can just create a color, call it base BG color. And now I have, I can control the white, the background of the color between, between white and dark mode. Um, and the coming product soon, even if it's the same color, as you can see here, featured product background, but let's say down the road, you want to then make a light appearance. We, we still have it set up to where I can just go in and change the light appearance. So typically when I work on a project, I always stick to this pattern and I find that it works really well when you're dealing with uh, colors on a larger scale. Um, if you're dealing with it on the smaller scale, you can just do base primary or you can do base like, you know, red or dark gray or gray and do it that way. So it just depends on how you want to structure. But this way I find is easier for more flexibility down the road when you have to change stuff. Okay, sorry. Uh, here we have our base color. And um, one thing that it, in the design that is um, pretty evident, or I should say for me, is the fact that this design has no header as you would typically see. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna um, only have a header, but only when you scroll. So we wanna make that inline. So we're gonna say navigation, uh, bar title display, and we're gonna do that inline. Um, and now, what we want is we need to display these icons. And so these are coming from SF symbols. So this one is called magnifying glass uh, and this one is cart. So we can just create a toolbar. And then in the toolbar, we're gonna create a toolbar item. So toolbar, oops, toolbar item and we're going to say placement and for the first one we're going to say dot navigation trailing so that way we put the icons on the right side of the screen and now we just add a button and uh, an action and we're going to do system name here and say magnifying glass. You know, when people are watching you, you always mess up typing. So I'm, I'm all like nervous that I'm gonna not know how to spell magnifying glass. And then Alandis is gonna tell me tomorrow how I messed up that word. So yeah, um, action. And then here, we're gonna go to uh, another system pref, I'm sorry, another system SF symbol, we're gonna say image system name, and we're gonna do cart here. And we can hit resume. And we see our first one, and our second one is not showing up probably because uh, it may not be cart. Uh, it is, but it doesn't show. Why is it not showing? Bar, action, I uh, don't know, but it should be, so I'm gonna just think that it's a issue with um, with this code, or I'm sorry, with the display, but this is correct. Um, and now what we wanna do is we, in our design, we have this logo here and we wanna display a logo. So if I wanna display a logo, I'm gonna move it to the top and say toolbar. Oh, I know why this doesn't work actually. So here, this should be item group that's why, and that's why the other one didn't work, and now it works, so that's why. Um, and then tool bar item, I think it's a group again. This one is just a normal one, which is why I got messed up on that one. And then this is placement, and then we're gonna say 
dot principal, which means basically the middle. Um, and then we're going to do image and Nike dash logo. And then we're going to resize it a bit. So we're going to do resizable and we're going to do a frame. We're going to set this to 104 and we're going to set the height to 37. And thankfully in the new Xcode, it won't do every single option in the code hinting. So now we have this and we have but buttons, but you notice that our buttons are right now, they're currently blue. So in order to fix the buttons from being blue, we can uh, add a foreground color to our toolbar. So let's um, minimize this down and we're gonna do dot uh, foreground color dot, uh, we're just gonna say black and this is probably the bad thing to do, especially if you're gonna do, um, in this case, I didn't really set this up, but we could make this like a uh, base text color. Uh, and that will, that will actually work because if we switch, like if we run it and we switch from dark mode to light mode, the icons will change from black to white when we do the switch. Um, I'm running the sim now. It's appearing over here. So once it runs, we have the dark. And then if I hit Command A, Command Shift A switches. And now we have these are now showing in white. And then now they're showing in black. So we have the um, icons working. Um, the logo is also shifting colors as we switch between dark and light mode. So we are set up here and we can go ahead and move on to home view now. So we'll close, Command Shift O, and work in home view. And we'll close the right panel. So now we're in home view. Uh, let's go back again. So as I said earlier, I like to attack the first thing that I know that I'm gonna do here. I know I wanna display this in a scroller, and so this is, the first thing in my eyes that I feel like I need to attack the fir first. So that's what we're going to work on now. And we shall see how we do that. So sorry, getting there. So when we, um, create this, we're looking in particular at the sort of the item that we're the item that's getting repeated. And um, in this particular case, we know I know that it's going to be a Z stack. So I I'm going to get to that point first. So I would just take this text view, because I will eventually need it once I get down to here. So instead of deleting it, I'll just say embed in Z stack. And um, trying to look at each of the different things. Let's go ahead and drop an image down. And as I said, I'm just kind of building this as we go um, because I want you to kind of see how I go from this file home view to all of the separate views. So it will may take a little longer to get to the end result, but you'll also see that process. So we have Jordan. We have him. I'm gonna go ahead and for now delete this because um, you'll see in just a second why, but let's hit resume. So Jordan's here. The shoe is 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 at a normal uh, level, um, but we eventually need it to, to have a little rotation to it. Um, so let's look at the next thing that we wanna do is we have this background in here that we wanna put behind it. So let's look at how that works. So first thing we want to do is, hmm, thinking about it in the, in the scale of like how you guys are seeing it, but I want to make, so I want to do a, let's do images on top, color dot base featured product background color. And we're going to do dot frame. And I know that the width and the height needs to be set specifically. 
um, here. So width is 194 and the height is going to be 260. So right now, both of these are sitting in the middle. So by default, the alignment is gonna be middle, but we want the alignment, if we're in a Z stack, we actually want the alignment to be left, or in this case, uh, leading. So we can do that by changing our Z stack and we can say alignment and then alignment again. And then we have control of the horizontal and vertical. So in the horizontal and vertical, we want it to be leading, but we also want, we want this vertical to be center. So we're gonna say leading, and then we're gonna say center. So now we see that it's, it's off, it's moved to the side, just like we have in our design. And now we need to add the rounded corners. So we can um, do a dot corner radius and we're gonna say 20, right? So I have this class, it's, it's, a, it's used for shapes. Um, typically when I do stuff in Swift UI, I sometimes wanna be able to control which corner of the graphic I want to have rounded corners or not, and I'm gonna use it in this case. So this is not out of the box. This is not something you get from Swift UI. It's just a class that I built. It's in the utilities called uh, View Corner Radius. And so I can specify exactly which corners I want to do adjust. So here, if I just hit comma and then hit corners, and this will take an array or a single item. So we want to make it so that the bottom doesn't have corners. And you'll see why in just a second. So we're going to do top left and we're going to do uh, dot top right. Boom. So now we have the corner radius down here and we have nothing here. So the idea would be to create the secondary one to be brushed up against. Now, if you wanted to match the design where it shows the corner radius here and it's overlapping, then you can do similar to this um, by just doing spacing and changing that. But um, to make it easier, I just did it with the corner radius. So for now, this one is here and we need to do the bottom one. So this, if we try to do the bottom one with the image, we need the image to be over the two, to be over pretty much the entire thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna embed the color into another Z stack. And then that one will be aligned to the top. So we're gonna create another color, dot base, dot featured product background, um, we're gonna cut. We're gonna make the frame. The width is gonna be the exact same, 194, and the height in this case will be 50. So height is 50. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing with corner radius, but in this case we're gonna say uh, bottom right is all we want, and bottom left is all we want. Boom. Okay, so right now the Z stack is set to the center, um, but I need to have, so the first thing we wanna do is fix that. So we wanna fix the alignment. We wanna make this, actually we'll fix this, we'll embed in a V stack, and then we'll take this color and we'll move it into here. So now the two are there, they're the same. We can change this footer, the product to footer background color uh, there and now it's white so let's fix this so let's do preview layout dot size that fits so now we have just what we need okay and now what we want to do is we want that color in the background to be um, the base color that we're using so that way we can see it so we're going to just put a background on this preview um, uh, by saying, let's see, let's mess around and let's try background color dot base BG color. All right, so we c it's very subtle, but you can see it. Um, it's probably hard to see in the video, but it's there. 
So that works, but we can do a little bit better and copy this and then let's do group. Uh, I don't know why I copied it. <laughs> we can command click and go to group, right? And then we can uh, copy this one. I'm sorry, before we copy, we can set this one. If we go over here, we can go to our preferences and we can change the scheme and we'll say light. And now we have light and then we can copy this, put it down here and now we can put dark. And now we have two versions. So in the dark, you can definitely see the footer and in the, white, in the light, you can see it's very subtle, but it's there. So you can all notice that there's a gap between the uh, footer and the top. So we need to fix that. So if we go here on the V stack, we can set the spacing to zero. And now we don't have any space there. And then we can also change, we can leave it there because right now this is fine. Everything is working, but let's do a little cool. Let's do something else to make um, Daisy say pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, we're going to make, we're going to turn the image and use, um, the rotation effect on the image. So we're going to do dot rotation effect. We're going to do an angle and then we're going to set it to degrees and set it to minus 23. And now we have it to where it's kicked to the side and up. So we've done that. Now let's look at what's next. So we know that the, we have this logo here, we have the plus button here, and we have the heart here. So let's see, what can we do first? Uh, let's try the uh, Jordan. So if we go up to the Z stack up here, we can do image quotes, and we can say Jordan dash dash logo, dash large. And then we've got the Jordan here. Um, but in the design, it's kind of up, it's more towards the top than it is to the center. And it's a little bigger, so Jordan large. Um, so what we can do is change our Z stack and put this alignment and then do on another alignment. And then here, and we can say dot center, dot top. And now we've got it somewhat where we need. And then the only adjustment we have to do is say padding dot top is 50. And that'll bring it down a bit. And now we've got the logo where we want. And you can always play with these numbers to get them where you'd like. But now we've got the logo that's behind the shoe and uh, the shoe that's off of the design um, all done just using Z stacks and kind of just aligning things in the Z stack. So that's good. Um, we also just need to get the, we want to get the um, plus button added. So that's the next thing that we have to do and the heart. So right now, we have this here. Let's add another V stack here. So we'll say V stack. And in here, we're going to do an image with a system name. And we'll say plus. So SF symbols again. Um, and we're going to just put a spacer here because we're going to need it. Um, and then the next thing is, is we want right now, everything is kind of jacked up. Now we've kind of messed it up because we used the spacer, but we'll fix it. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add, um, a background to our image with a clip shape. So we're going to come here and we're going to say dot, um, background. And we're going to do color dot base featured product background color. And then we're going to use that corner radius thing that I built or found or whatever. <laughs> and we're going to use that. So it's going to be 20. 
and we're going to say that the and this is the top left corner of the button and you can see right now it's not really showing because we don't have anything else for the um nothing's really showing right now but we're getting there all right so we have corner radius we need another one so we're going to add another corner radius this one is going to be 10 and we're going to put this one to the bottom right then we're going to clip shape this so we're going to do clip shape and we're going to do rectangle parentheses all right and then next we're going to say dot foreground color dot base featured product plus color so now we have a color for the dark mode and a color for the light mode here so that's there and we have this spacer that's working and what we want to do is we want it to be in this left corner so right now we don't need to really do anything here, but we want to give it, um, we want to embed this into a V stack. So if I, first of I hit embed, we're going to say alignment dot leading and then spacing for now we don't need. Okay. Um, Sorry, just looking at my notes. Um, we're gonna set a height to this. To this. Um, so one thing that I always recommend is use turning ribbons on in in Swift UI, especially when you haven't refactored, because it's a lot harder to see things. We can't, you know, like we have this Z stack and, and then this Z stack and then this Z stack. So I can minimize the background here. I can minimize this here. And then it just makes the code a little readable, but we will refactor. So it's even more readable. But right now we have a couple of Z stacks going on. And in particular, this Z stack here, which is um, center and top we want to put a um, background color on it, trying to think if that makes sense. We need corner radius, rounded rectangle. Um, so, sorry. Um, okay, I see what's going on. We don't need that and we do need this. So in the horizontal one, we need to add a height for this one so we're going to put a height on this z stack say frame height and it's going to be 312. so that brings everything back down to the normal size and we can look inside of this v stack here we have this v stack with this plus and that's good and then um we have a leading and then we're going to Right now we're gonna embed, so we're gonna take this and embed it in an H stack and minimize it for now so that it can work. And I know probably right now you're probably like, why? But we don't have our heart right now and we don't have, we need to add the heart and we need to also add um, a couple of other things. So for now we have the, Heart, sorry. This is why I don't, uh, this is the point of why I'm doing it this way. So you can see my process of how I wanna break these. Cause I, I don't normally, I would have already started refactoring uh, cause there's just a lot going on. So I'm trying to show as much as I can before I refactor. So the first V stack is in inside the H and then, so we can minimize this. And then inside of here, we're gonna add an image and we're gonna say system name and we're gonna add the heart. And then we're just going to notice that the heart is in the center. So we're just gonna do some adjustments to the heart by adding a font and making the system size 24. We're gonna add some padding and offset. And right now it still hasn't changed because we need to change the H stack and say that we wanna align it to the top. 
So now we're we're close, right? Uh, and we want to put a, f a height on this frame. Uh, this should not be. We want to put a height on the H stack and set it to 50. So we'll say frame height 50. Okay, so now we're there. Um, we've got this logo, we've got that. We've got the rotation there. Um, and I'm gonna put a height on the Jordan image or the shoe. So we're gonna take this and put a frame of 210 and that'll push some other things out of the way and where it needs to be. So for now, we've got our image, we've got large, we've got pretty much everything done with the exception of we don't have money at the bottom the price isn't there and all of that. So we just need to add an H stack here and we're gonna do text and we're going to say um, 99 and um, we're gonna do custom font. So custom dot bold and we're gonna set the size to 32 and I will go over that in just a minute and then foreground color is going to be base base product um, product text color, so that's there. We're going to put a spacer here, and we're going to add another thing called text, and it's going to be new. And then here we're going to do custom again. We're going to add a heavy, and we're going to set it to fifteen. And then we've got a couple of different things. I'm not gonna type each one of these out cause that'll just bore you even more. <laughs> so we're gonna add a bunch of things to add to this so that it, it, it becomes basically a rounded corner with background. So here I added some padding around it. I put a black color, which again, this isn't gonna work in light and dark mode because um, I didn't actually do a new one. So we maybe we can add a color before the end of this one to make that work in both modes. The corner radius is set to four and it's a rectangle for a clip shape and the foreground color is white. Um, and so right here we could probably do um, something so that this also works in dark and light mode. But as you can see, we are good there. So now we just need to work on this. So we're going to say padding dot horizontal. And then we're going to set the frame width and set it to 194. And we're going to set the height to 50. All right. So we're there. And let's see what we're missing and figure out what's going on. So we just have to fix. So we have our vertical. So let's go back, go back through everything and see how everything is working. So right now we have some things that are probably not in the right place and that's why something isn't working. So right now we have our Z stack, which has our alignment here uh, and that's leading and center, sorry, leading and it says leading and center. Let me just verify that is correct. So leading and center. And then we have another Z stack, which is a uh, horizontal center and top. So both of those are correct. So now we look at, we have a V stack. That is the problem. Okay, now I see what's going on. So we have two V stacks sitting inside of here and this one needs to move out. So horizontal leading needs to come, oops, structurally it's there, but I'm just missing. This one needs to go to the left and one needs to go to the right. And that's where, this is why I do not like, um, okay. So we have a Z stack center and top. So Z stack center and top. And inside of the Z stack, we have a V stack with spacing. Then we have another Z stack with alignment. And that 
I don't believe is right. So we're going to get rid of that for now. I'm going to cut it there. And then we have our graphic backgrounds there. Okay, so right now we're good with this particular Z stack. Next, we have there, there. Um, next, put that down. We have the alignment V stack. Good grief. Um, image, trying to figure out text, image there, image here. All right, I believe that this one, Jordan padding top, and then the V space is alignment. Should be that one. Alignment top, yes. Okay, so we need to change this to, or add spacing here set to zero. Okay. And then next we should be pretty close to where we, um, where we want to be. So in this particular one, we have spacing set to zero alignment is set to top. And then inside of this one, we have a V stack and that V stock has the plus button and the spacer. So all of that is correct. And then we have a heart in outside of the V stack and that's good. So that all of that is correct. So we can minimize this H stack and the frame is 50. Then we have our Jordan. This needs to come into here better. Okay. And then we have our H stack, which has our pricing. This all needs to come into here as well. And this goes under. And we're just a bit off. <laughs> so we're there. And now, so we did a little bit of cleanup. Um, and now we just need to figure out what's going on. I think we just have to put some padding here. So let's look at, so we have 312 here, and then let me minimize again. So 312, no, no, padding dot. I don't know if this is where the leading is supposed to be. Let's see, I don't, I think that's on body. It is on body, so that won't work. Um, this is probably not in the right spot there. And there, uh, canvas. Okay. So image Jordan logo is supposed to be in the Z stack and this is, so that was right. This is here. Boom. And the only thing that's really off right now is the heart one. It's padding is not correct. I don't know why it's off, but it is. So I am going to just take it from my, like this. Copy and paste it and there fixes it. Okay, so we, now we have this product and obviously this is like really, as you can tell from me, even struggling, trying to figure out uh, every single thing. This is where I would have already refactored a bunch of code. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna take this whole entire Z stack. I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna, in my supporting folder, I'm gonna do new file, 
and I'm going to call this a uh, featured shoe featured shoe item view. Uh, yeah, replace it. That's because I didn't replace it before. And here we can add it. And that is done. So now we can go back and say featured shoe item view parentheses. And now we have well, obviously a lot cleaner code and everything is still sort of working the way we want here. Um, but this is the thing we want to repeat and we want to put it in a scroller. So let's just command click and say repeat and we can just hit return. And now we've got five of them and because we're in group, it's not working. So let's for now, let's just come back to home view and go to the default behavior with the base background here and delete all of these. We know it works in dark mode and light mode uh, there. So we have one item here. And if we play it, nothing moves because right now we're repeating, but we're not actually putting it in anything. So now we need to display it and we want to display it horizontally. So we want to add this to a scroller, but first we have to actually add it to an H stack. So we're going to say this in an H stack. So then that lets us, gives us the H stack and shows us all of the items we're looking for. And now we can command click and say embed in V stack and just change this to say scroll view and then save. And now we have it in the scroll view. And then uh, when you have horizontal scrollers, you wanna say dot horizontal, we'll then fix it and push it to the right. So now it's done. If I hit play, I can scroll from left to right. And um, whenever I, for me, I always, I, n I never like seeing that scroller here. So here we can say scroll, um, sorry, show scroller indicator false. So now that goes away. So one thing you can see is it's, it's pushed up to the, to the edge of the screen and we want to have padding there. So in order to add padding, we would add it to our stack. So here we can say, padding dot leading. And now we have a little bit of padding at the beginning. And so we can do it. If we move it to scroll view, then it's going to create this, this cutoff. And we're going to, it's not going to appear as if it's going in the black. It's going to appear as if it's going under this invisible line we can't see. So you, you want to make sure that the, the stack that's wrapped around your for each is the one that you want. And then that will give you the padding in the scroller and, and display the way you're looking. And even here, you can see it's not quite, it's cutting off. And even the images are, I'm sorry, the products are brushed up right against each other. So here is where we're gonna do spacing. Oops, sorry. We're gonna do spacing, colon, um, let's do 50 and now we can have it and then we can even do padding dot horizontal, sorry. Uh, yeah, horizontal. And that should give us the buffer we need at the end of the view, the scroller. So what's left is we just need to make this header. So now that we have our scroller and I'm still in home and I don't actually want to be in home, but for now I can keep working in home. So we will um, create a header um, for this, but we could, let me see, let's just minimize this and then we can put this inside of a V stack. Yeah. So let's embed this into a V stack and just for Simplicity will minimize so that the, the scroller is here, but we need the header. We want it to display to the left of this. So first thing that we want to do is we want to create an H stack. Sorry, let me just make sure that's right. Hmm. We could, so if we do, 
we can actually, sorry, we're going to create a Z stack here. So Z stack. And inside of the Z stack, we're going to do an H stack. And then we're going to do another Z stack. Um, because we, we're looking at, or we have two, a couple of things um, that we want to do. I'm trying to see why. Scroller, header, why? We don't actually need that. So that's not here. And coming soon. Actually messed it up on my original one. So we need a header and we also need the scroller to work. So what can we do? Um, horizontal header, July 2022. Okay, I'm getting what's going on now. So um, Z stack, H stack, and then we're going to do another Z stack here. And, uh, good grief. Um, sorry. There. Scroller. I am going to just delete that and start again. So let's get rid of that and scroll view product. All right. So this is going to be the main container and it's going to be a Z stack. Uh, and the alignment is gonna be leading and top. So alignment, uh, alignment, and then horizontal leading and top. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we want to embed this scroll view into an H stack. So we're going to say H stack and we're going to say that the height frame height is 312. All right. So now we have a scroll view here. And then what we want to do is add the header up above so we can minimize this and we can create a Z stack here and set the alignment to alignment um center and top okay and then we just need to do um this thing here so we're going to create something that works for both so we just need a line and then the text that says featured so we're going to say v stack and then we're going to do text and then Inside of this text, we're going to say featured. And right now it's going to push it and it's going to look weird. And then we're going to add a spacer here. And finally, we're going to add a rectangle. Um, divider won't work in this case. Um, so we have to do a rectangle. And for this, we're going to say dot fill, color, dot base, horizontal text color, because we want to make sure it changes. And then we're gonna just say frame with one. So now we have featured, but featured needs to be obviously displayed horizontally, sorry, vertically. So we can fix that by first, let's change this to custom. And it'll be regular and the size will be 14. So that's the first thing. And next we're gonna change the foreground color. Foreground color is color dot base horizontal header text color. Done. Then we're gonna add a rotation effect. So we'll say rotation effect and we'll say dot degrees and we'll say minus 90. So now we've got it turned and then we're gonna do padding dot bottom 20. All right, so that does there. We have our spacer, we have our V stack. Um, and now 
we've got it somewhat there. So now we just need to fix our Z stack and make it work. So we've got this and now we can do our Z stack here. So we can do some padding here and add it to vertical and make it 25. So now that pushes it in. Then we're going to create a background with color dot base horizontal header color. And we're then going to do corner radius. And we're going to say that it's six. And then the corners we want to hit are top right and bottom right. So dot top right and dot bottom right. And finally, we want to create a clip shape of rectangle. Boom. So we're close. Um, let's see, it's sort of there vertical. Let's change that to 15. Nope. So the padding here is good. The corner radius is good. So right now we have this here and we want to make this a header. So we're going to just cut this out, get rid of it from there. And we're going to then go into create a new file, Swift UI, and we're going to call this a scroller header view. And there. All right. And then we're going to say scroller header view there. Resume. Okay. So now if we scroll through, we can see that it's going underneath. It's got a little bit of a gap here that we don't like. Uh, we can fix it later. Um, but we've got it working ultimately where we want. Um, and we can make tweaks after that. So now that I have this scroller basically done, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna create another variable called featured scroller and put it down here. And it's erroring because I haven't added anything. So we'll just put featured scroller there and now that will still do the exact same thing we had before. And then the next thing that we wanna change is we wanna create our coming soon, which is very similar in this part here. So we can go ahead and take from the scroller header and we can embed that into a H stack, sorry, a V stack. Keep pushing the wrong one. Um, okay, so now we have a V stack here. And one thing that we'll see, stop and play, uh, is it's not even showing. I don't know why it's <laughs> not showing, but oh, I know why it's not working. So this has to be in a V stack as well. And that's why. Okay, so we have this scroller here. This header works um, dynamically in height. So once we embed it into another stack, it's going to grow whatever height we make it. And that's where you should always build things. So right now it's going to be this tall, but we'll fix it as we progress through. Um, so the next thing that we want to work on is the um, coming soon and the shoe for that and the logo and that and all that stuff. So that's what's next. So let's look at how that works. So we have featured on the right, I'm sorry, on the left and that and there. All right, so let's do in here, we're gonna do a scroller. So we know we need a scroller here and we know that it's gonna be horizontal. And we also know that we're not gonna do indicator. So we're gonna just say false. Next, 
we are. So we have our scroll view and we want to create a H stack in here. So we're going to go here and say H stack here. And we're going to set up a for each. And we're going to say zero space dot dot less than four. And this is there. And we don't actually need um, item. So we're just going to do underscore here for now, since we're not going to use it. And inside of here, we're going to do a Z stack. And then we're going to do a rectangle and do dot fill. And in there, we're going to do color dot base coming soon product color and frame width is 229 and the height is 122. And then finally, we're gonna do a corner radius of 24 for this product. So that's there. And as you can see, it's displaying underneath and we'll fix that. Um, we're gonna then add um, the shoes so we're going to put um, some Kobe's on the scroller. So we have the rectangle. And then we're just going to put some of Kobe's shoes here. And then we're going to create a V-stack again here. And it's probably not displaying because it's probably, for some reason, not going there, I don't know why, but we'll fix it in a second. And then here we'll do a spacer, an H stack, and we're gonna do the image, um, system name, sorry, not a system name, but we'll just do, here we'll do Nike dash logo, and then a spacer and h stack and we're going to say text and things right now don't look right because i put something in the wrong stack but we'll fix it so fourth july is the format all right and then we'll set the color to foreground color to white and we'll change the font we'll make it ultra white uh, ultra light in the font size. So we have our V stack, we have our H stack, um, we have our Z stack up there. Um, so we will add size, boom, and that puts everything back down. And uh, Kobe might not be in this project for some reason. Did I not do it? I didn't. So file, um, Kobe, oops, uh, Kobe. And that's why this Kobe's are not showing up. So we'll just drag this into the project and put them into shoes. And now the Kobe's will show up. And just a second, okay, resume, boom. So that's in. Uh, then our H stack that has the image and the logo here, that has a spacer and a spacer. We're gonna add some padding and stuff there so everything works, as you can see, is a little bit better on that aspect. And then this H stack needs to get a width and height, corner radius, and a background color. So we're gonna just put that in and that will be there. And 
finally, so we have this V stack with a height of 229 by 122. We are going to then add a frame to this one. So we're using this, we're gonna use a different technique by using an offset and that'll allow us to push it um, above the, the image before we use the Z stack. You can use either technique, but I wanted to show both. So here you have 229 and 180 as the height. So we have that set. And then finally, we can use another little offset and padding and trailing. So we can go here and we can then adjust it a little bit there. So we now have our item inside of this scroller and we can refactor this code. Um, sorry, this is actually one thing out. So this has to come out one and go here and boom. So we have this one, we're gonna cut it and we're going to then do another file. And we're gonna say that this one is coming soon, item view. And we can paste it into here. Move back to the main timeline and say coming, oops, coming soon, item view. And that is, uh, I messed that one up. So we need to, so this is repeating four times. I actually don't want it to repeat four times. I need this to pull out and save it there. And then I need this to come back to the main timeline. So in home view, we will add this to the scroller and then just move this into the item that we're repeating. And now we'll hit save. And now we have four repeating there. And finally, this is in a, let's see, this is in an H stack, that is a V stack. So that's the reason why that's looking crazy. Boom, so that's fixed. And now we can put a height on that, but we for now we are good. So we can have the Z stack alignment. Let's see, what's this? Okay, so we're gonna do um, the header here. And for some reason, I'm not seeing where that's going. So right now this, everything is good here. So we can say that's fine. We can take this and we can then do var coming soon scroller and say some view and paste that there. And then we can do coming soon scroller and we can paste in two of them resume and now we have two of the scrollers in um so we can even start refactoring but i'm going to do the last one and then i'll refactor all of this into more concise uh, views but we have one more um, thing that we need to add which is our browse by athlete and that's pretty simple so i'm going to just um kind of go through this somewhat quickly so we first we're gonna just start with a V stack in here. So we'll just do a V stack that's set to leading. And then we are going to say browse by athlete at the top. So that way it's there. And then we are just going to display really simply text views um, that are going to just repeat. So we're gonna paste in there and now we've got our text views of, of, the, of the athletes. And we'll take this out and we'll do one more view var. Um, this is a featured athlete, I think is what I have it. Um, browse by athlete, that's right. Browse by 
athlete. Uh, some view. Okay. And then finally, I can just put this browse by athlete. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to command click on this, say embed in VStack, but I'm also just going to change it to a scroll view. And just, just to be sure, I want to make it vertical. And I can hit resume. And you'll see that these all now are displaying the way we are expecting. If I hit play, I can scroll. Um, I can scroll this way and I can scroll this way. But we don't have headers and we don't have, um, so that's missing. And we can add those in just a second. But right now, um, I we can go with anybody that has any questions um, so far. So as you can see, when you when working in Swift UI, and I've been working in Swift UI since day one, really. I was at Dub Dub when they were announced. Um, one of the things that uh, Apple brought up in that particular talk was to work in small chunks of code. And I think you seeing me struggle a little bit to get to figure out where things were is the epitome of why you should do small things. So I wanted to show you more and I should have just I should have just broke it up into smaller um, to begin with, but I wanted you to understand why they that is very important. Um, and it you saw, as I said, you saw me trying to figuring out things out. And obviously it isn't what I plan, but it, it is a good learning lesson for everyone, especially me. So <clears throat> what I do is when I'm usually working in a project like this, I'll create variables here and I'll push variable. I'm sorry, you guys can't see code, so it, it doesn't help. But um, let me just re go back to my screen. Oops, that doesn't work. Uh, where are we? Looking, looking, looking. Um, list. That's that one. And here. Sorry. <laughs> Too many buttons. Okay. So right now you have this um scroller here, and we have these variables. And what's important to know is this, um, for me, when do I use this versus when do I create another class? So this is, you can see featured shoe item gets repeated. So I, I put all things that are repeated, repeatable things into their own views. But this featured scroller is sort of like a waste of space too because I'm just posting or putting this into a, a variable when I could do more. So what I would typically do is I would refactor this. So all of this is going to get refactored, but I typically have, I look at how, um, I look at the way that the code guides me. So if it's something that needs to be repeated, I create a view. If it's something that's going to be just in this particular view, I use a variable here and then I'll refactor if I need to down the road. So that's kind of how I had, I adjust when it comes to that. So um, that is how I look at it. And I'll show you more as we progress onto it. But we, there's not much left. Um, this was probably the most intricate part of this design. The detail page is actually fairly simple and doesn't take very long. But this one was a little bit uh, more complicated with the scrollers going from left to right things being rotated and overlaid. And that's, that's kind of why, um, the name of this is complex UI. So, um, you know, it, you, you learn as you go. If anyone has any questions, please ask. Um, I would be more than happy to explain some of the things that I did. If you didn't fully understand, uh, if not, I'll just keep going and we'll move forward. So I'll give it a couple minutes or a couple seconds and see if anyone has a question. And so far it doesn't look like anyone does. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with code. Okay, so 
So we have this featured scroller. I want to take this and make it a class. I don't like it being here. So we're gonna fix that first. But before we do that, you'll notice that scroller header here is saying featured for everything. But really in the design, this one has a date, this one says featured, and we really wanna just pass a title in so that each one of these uh, can be separate. So let's fix that first. So if I command click into scroller header, I can just go in here and say, let title and create a string and then oops sorry um and then now it's complaining so now i got to go into header i need to add a title here and then here we'll just put like featured and i'm going to do it lowercase featured and then in the here i'm going to do this uppercase so the title dot uppercase save okay now i'll go back to this one and we'll say this is the featured scroller so this is going to be featured and then i need a title for the coming soon so this one is going to be um we'll say uh what is it in here july 2022 uh, there and then um, we'll actually since this one's above we'll say it's June and then this one uh, the next coming soon scroller so right now they're they're gonna say both gonna say July 22nd until we can refactor this and then browse by athlete right now we have this one here and we wanted to fix that. So this is another place where we can add the title and make it work and we can refactor that code as well. So let's first move, let's first move coming soon into its own. So I'm gonna do supporting, I'm gonna do new file, uh, Swift UI and do coming soon uh, scroller or we'll just say coming soon view. And do I wanna do that? <laughs> Sorry, naming is always uh, a thing. Uh, we'll say coming soon scroller is fine. And then coming soon view, coming soon scroller and replace it. And we'll just put this in, all right. And then we have a title that we can add to here. So we can refactor that and we can just delete this and we can say coming soon scroller parenthesis and we can add the second one and hit resume and nothing should change. Uh, resume, nothing's changed, but you can see that uh, it's all still there. Everything still works, so that's good. So we want to be able to put a title in this one. So if we go into um, the coming soon, uh, let's, let's do a view that we can use. So we're gonna do supporting, we're gonna do a new file. We're gonna call this coming soon view, coming soon view. And, and here we're going to take two things. We're gonna take a month and year, and that's gonna be a string, and we're gonna take a short date, and that's gonna be a string. And then from here, we're gonna use our scroller. So we have a Z stack here. And then we're gonna do text. We're gonna say short date. And then we're gonna do coming soon scroller. Boom. All right. And we have this content header that we wanna add as well. 
And for now, we can just take it from home view and we, it's the same kind of concept here. So we're gonna just take it from this one and we're gonna add it to the coming soon view. So we'll put it here. And then, I'm sorry, undo. We're gonna put this in a V stack and then inside the V stack, we're gonna add it. All right, and then in this one, we're going to just say that this title for the text is called coming soon. And scroll view. Good. Let's see what this looks like. Um, some of the errors. So we have short date missing from this one. And we can just update that to display this, save, resume. All right, so now we have coming soon. And now this text here, we can just make this capital. And for now it works. So let's go back out to home view and then the refactor. And so instead of using the coming soon scroller, we can just say coming soon view, which has the scroller in it and we can just use them both there and stop and play, oops. And it needs the month and year for this. So we can add that. Um, Boom. Okay, so we have that. And coming soon view. Oh, I did this in the wrong place. So let's go into coming soon view and fix this part of it. So we have a V stack with spacing of 20. That is still good. And then we have this in here, and this is in a V stack. We can move this down to here because the two are connected. That's why. And we can say that this V stack has spacing of 20 and padding top is 10. So let's just put that in. So Oops, there, save. And now we just do coming soon scroller, save and resume. So we have one in here. Why isn't the second one in there? Let's go back to jump to definition and Sorry. That, let's go back and now let's resume and resume. Oh, V stack spacing 20 and padding dot top and 10. And then coming soon view here. Sh 
should display both of our Coming soon view should display both of our stuff. So we have our V stack, our header, and then we have, this is what's wrong, coming soon view is in coming soon view and that's why it's messing up right now. Um, let's do this, paste it and That's there, and content header is here, and <laughs> HStack scroll header. So I didn't do a, in the last scroll header, I didn't actually do a title. So I'm going to just remove it for now and just do um, text goes here for the time being. And then back here, the scroll headers here. And just so that I know that everything is the same, I'm gonna put in this scroller there and these will say Kobe's save. We have this spacing. Uh, we don't need the padding at the top for this one. And we have the short date um, I don't think we need months and year. I think I just added that, but I never actually used it. Nope. Okay, so month and year is not needed. Short date is. So now we should hit resume. We've got a couple of things that are messed up. So month and year, short date can go away. This can go. And this can go. And hit resume. Okay, sorry, that's wrong. Short date stays, month and year goes. Month and year, month and year, and no title needed here. Save, extra argument, delete, and uh, scroll header, don't need that right now. Hit save, all right, and have no more errors okay perfect so we should hit resume um, home view doesn't need the header title and save again and resume and there we go so once it builds previews taking its time let's try again there we go okay so text goes text goes um, we have an extra one up there so featured there, let's see what's going on. Featured scroller, coming soon scroller. Um, featured, I'm not sure why that extra header is there. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it. So we just need to do our fix for the featured scroller. So we have featured scroller item view. Um, I'm sorry, we have featured scroller right now and we wanna move this particular code out of here. So we're just gonna take this code, we're gonna delete featured and we're gonna delete this and we can just do another view, new view file here featured scroller, sorry, featured scroller view and bring this code in. All right, and we can go back 
and add featured scroller view parenthesis and hit resume and resume all right and browse by athlete is the last one that needs to get refactored so let's fix that we're going to go ahead and take this code here and delete and we're going to say browse by athlete view and then create this one new file browse by athlete view and replace and save and go back now we have browse by athlete that's working so let's see where that extra text goes here is coming from so we removed coming soon so it's in the coming soon scroller so we can just go into there jump jump um this is why because this is not supposed to be there and let's go back and now we should have everything working the way we want um, so we have two coming soon's, which isn't, isn't correct. So if we go back to coming soon, we can tweak that a bit. So we have coming soon view, and that's where the problem is coming soon view here. This is not supposed to be in there. We go back out and we can put that here and we hit resume and resume again there we go so that's now working the way it should and then when we come here we've got this and then we can just fix the coming scroller here so we have this scroll view v stack i don't see why that so we can get rid of that we can get rid of that and we can do a v stack paste oops we can paste that down then we can say spacing is 20 sorry i'm in the wrong thing that's the problem there sorry coming soon scroller jump to definition so everything in here looks fine now we have this thing here, which is a content header. So let's fix that. We're going to just do new file, Swift UI, content header view, and we're going to replace. And we're going to put in this one and save. And then we just want to make it so that this content header can be updated no matter which one we use. So <clears throat> we're going to add a title to this one. And we're also going to add another thing. So we have a title and we're going to do a see all. So right now we just have coming soon, but we also want to do a see all section. So we're just going to add that underneath. And if we hit resume, Resume, okay, it's not going to because of the content header preview. And by default, um, you don't have to pass in the is C visible is set because it's already set to true. So we can actually say is C all, we can set it to false instead. So by default, it doesn't show. And right here is how we'll control it. And then finally, let's go back. And then in this one, we're gonna do content header view. We'll do a title and then we'll say coming soon uh, in the content header. We're going to change this to be title uppercased 
and that's all that needs to get adjusted there and that's here and let's hit resume so now we have coming soon and we can just copy this and we can use it in the other ones so we can go back out so featured scroller is working browse by athlete is not so let's go here and this is the same thing so we can just replace this and then say browse by athlete and then uh, is see all visible we can set this to true so now we have that one showing and when we come back we have the see all showing here we don't have it there and then we can just add let's go back really quick and copy this one and let's go to featured scroller view and um, we could add it here I'm just gonna leave it out for now so you guys can play with that how you want and it's not really that important but we have our home page done uh, in the sense of just getting the layout where we want it um, so if we run this in the simulator We can see that we have coming soon. We have browse by athlete. The only thing that's missing is this featured. If you want to add it, it's really not that big of a deal. The completed code will have this portion if you want to do that one as well. Um, and then there's just a little bit of padding at the top that would need to get adjusted. Again, we we'll, won't worry about it. I'm not going to nitpick on these things. Now we just want to go from this view to a detail view. So we want to be able to select this product and then have it go to a detail page and then we can just create our detail page from there. So if we go to featured scroller view, we're creating items here and that's where we can um, make our link. So featured scroller view so right now we have this featured item view, but we're gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna do this navigation link and we're gonna set the destination for now when I don't have my, cause right now I don't have anything anywhere for this to go to. So um, you can use this empty view as a way to make sure that your, your nav links work. So right now, if I tap on this item, it's gonna take me to a blank page. So I know that this page is set up and ready to go. And then when I'm ready, I'll replace this with the detail page. So let's create a detail. Let's, well, we can even link to detail. So we just copy that, go back and let's replace the empty view with product detail view. And now if I tap on it, I'm going to product detail view. So we know that that works. Um, and now we can just go to product detail and product detail is pretty simple. We don't have a lot going on. Um, so all we need to do with product detail is create a couple of items and elements to take about 10 minutes to fix and do. Let me just pull up the design. So if we look at detail, we have this header here. We have these thumbs. We have a title with the, with the price this and then some sizes so let's just get for now we'll do this is kind of i kind of changed the layout of this so this is not actually right i think the dark modes no that's not right either so we'll fix it really quick uh and make it work so let's look at product detail view just give me a second and get situated in product detail If you have any questions, please ask. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is uh, take this and embed this into a scroller. So I'll put it at V stack and then just change this to scroll view and save. Um, and then everything that we're going to display in here is going to be in a V stack. So we're just going to go ahead and embed into a V stack. And we're going to make sure that the alignment is set to leading. Okay. 
So the first thing that we want to do is is add our stars and our text river for review. So um, so we have this title here that we're going to need to add, but right above it, we're going to add the stars. So we have this H stack and we're going to do um, system image using a symbol variant to fill the three. Then we're going to use a half filled image and then one that's empty. So that's what you're going to see in this particular H stack. Then we have text and reviews, and then we have the title name or the product name. So I'm going to make it so that the product name spans more than one line. So that way we can make sure that this wraps when the product text is too long. So here we have it wrapping. We have set our size and we've just set the multi-line text alignment to leading. So if I hit resume, we should see stars, we should see a text that wraps and all that is good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add the pricing and the pricing is going to go right under the text. So we can do a couple of lines and we can just add our text. And right here I'm adding it into a text view so that I can have the sense come up a little bit. So that's where this padding is there. And then, um, and I'm putting this in an H stack. If you don't need to do that, you don't have to wrap it in the H. You can just use a text. But in this case, I did a special case where I made I I made the two sizes different, um, and that's why I did that. And then we need the product description next. So we're going to add product description right after this H stack. So we have that, and now this is expanding the entire width. Obviously, we got to fix the padding. And next, we want to do colors. So we're going to create a V stack, and we're going to um, create uh, some colors here. So let me just make sure I've got everything I need. All right, and we're going to paste that down. So here we have. Uh, our colors header and we have a line and we have a bunch of colors that we want to display and right now I'm just doing a rounded rectangle with a corner radius and we'll come back and refactor this and make it work with an actual class and then finally we're going to do the same thing with the sizes so sizes are in and right now we are missing something in this, which is I'm using a lazy V grid and I'm using columns. And so what we wanna do is we wanna display all of the columns going across. So if let's say there's a hundred, it'll just display a hundred sizes. I'm just putting 16 items in. And the only way to make that work is we have to just add a little array at the top and here we're saying the fixed size is 75. And so that'll say, and the spacing is five pixels. So when I hit resume, you'll see our grid up here. Uh, try again. Uh, there we go. And so now we have the sizes with the grid and everything is in and working. And then the only thing we're missing is at the top of this, we have uh, the image. Uh, so we have our scroll view, our V stack. And I'm just going to get rid of all of this really quickly and just get to the end result for this. So we're just going to paste it down. And the only thing I added was this is a thumb scroller that we can scroll horizontally. So we have this scroll view here. And we also have uh, another Z stack here where we have the logo. We're doing our, our angle our rotation effect on the shoe. And we're doing a little bit of spacing and padding, but that's basically how that works. So if I hit play, these scroll from left to right, and this doesn't scroll but you can add a scroller if you want it. And so we have this working. Um, 
we want to refactor two things. We want the color to have colors. So we need to enable, we need to uh, enable some of our um, colors at the top. We also want to add some padding to the content that needs to happen. Um, let's do all of that really quick. So shoe. So the first thing we're going to do is add colors, sizes, and content padding. So we'll add the variables up here. Here we have colors. We just have black, red, and black, blue, and red. We have sizes, and when we have this content padding, we'll use all of that. And we want to create some supporting files. So the first one we'll do is a is color view, new file. And Swift UI color view. And let's create one more while we're here. New file here. And this will be size view. All right. So, first thing we want to do is display the color view. And that's just basically taking what we have in our current code and making it work. So right now, if we look at color view, it's just, that's the, that's the sizes and this is color. And it's just this really. So we can take this out, move this to color view, paste it and go back and then just do color view and save it. And if we hit resume, Nothing's going to change. Everything is going to remain the same. We have a red box that repeats. So what we want to do now is we need to, we want color view to take a color and um, set its color. And then we want to be able to select a color for the shoe that we're looking for. So we're going to do a color and that's going to pass a variable. So we need to do color and then color dot black or blue, doesn't matter here. So we have a color and then we can take this variable and we can replace it with red. Boom, save. Now we can go back and we can then say color colon and then we're gonna do item, but this doesn't work because right now we're counting. So we're gonna use the colors array that we created above and we're gonna replace it. So we're gonna say colors comma id colon backslash dot self and so now when we hit resume we will pass a color in for each one of the things that we created so here i have blue black and red and it's displaying in that order but if i do a comma i can do color dot pink and now pink will get added to the array and now pink will be displayed in the colors. So that's colors. And then we want to take these sizes and we want to do the exact same thing. So let's take sizes and make that work. So we are just about done. I have a couple things and we're finished. So let's get to uh, sizes. So in sizes, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a float. So let's go to size view. We're gonna pass in a float. Um, let's go back to product detail and let's go to sizes and let's just take this rounded rectangle. We'll remove it and we'll do it. Put it in size view and then paste it. And next we will. For time's sake, I will just create a button from this. Oops, sorry. So we have this, this rounded rectangle and we have a Z stack and we have the size that we want it to format. So we're gonna update the code so that this works like that. So now we have this rounded rectangle that will take the size and we'll put, a, and we'll put it on a background. 
that we're looking for. And then here we just pass the size and we can put like 9.9 .9, um, and that will work or 9.5 is probably a better size. Hit resume. And now you can see that this works. So now what we wanna do is um, add this to a button and make an action for it. And we also wanna make a check mark and have it um, hit plain or not. So if we go back to here, we can do button, sorry, we can do size view, parentheses size, and we'll do item again. And then over here, we can do sizes, comma, ID colon, backslash dot self, save. And hit resume. And right now, item isn't working because it's a float. So we're gonna replace the float with an item so that it passes through there and hit resume. And now we have items and sizes. Right. So now what we want to be able to do is if I click a color, it check marks and sh shows the represented button that we click. So we just have to let's first work with color. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a selected size in product detail. So we want to keep track of what size is selected as we're picking it. So when we go to product detail, we want to create a variable and we also want to create one for selected size. So we're going to create two state variables and they're going to be private. The first is going to be a float, which is set to zero. And then the selected color, which is going to default to black. So when what we should do, what we should see is when this is working, we should see a check mark on black. So let's add the check mark and um, build from there. So we're going to go back to size view and we're going to add our check mark. So here, size view, we have a Z stack and we're going to embed in another Z stack. And then here we're going to add our circle with our check. And we need to just do some offsetting for that so it displays in the right place. So we'll add that there. And we're going to hit save. And we'll go back. And if I hit resume, you'll see that all of our colors will have check marks. So we know that at least they all have check marks for now. As soon as it wants to get there today okay so for now it's not displaying i don't know why let's do oh i'm sorry i put it in size that's why we can leave it in here uh i'm gonna remove it just for now um rounded rectangle z stack um color view Z stack and so this is going to get the same here so we have that same check mark there and everything else is good so we see the check mark in size view and then color sorry back to product detail hit resume we can see color has it and now we just need to fix this so we have Z stack rounded Z stack. Let's go back to color view. We have it rounded. We have the height and width. We have this and I don't know why it's not offsetting correctly. Let's look at it there. Okay, weird. All right, we need to put a button on this. So we're going to command click on the Z stack and we're gonna say embed in Z stack and then change this to button, parenthesis action, colon there. And we have to create a color 
of binding. So we want so we want to be able to let the each color know that they've been selected. So by that we're going to pass this. So when we're using state, the parent has state, the child has binding. So here we have binding and now we want to basically say if your color is selected, you're going to show the check mark and if you're not, you're not going to show the check mark. So we'll use opacity to run this. So we have here We'll come down to this and we'll say opacity is there. And I see why it doesn't work now. And we're going to put this offset up here as well and hit. Oh, and then there, we just have to fix the preview. So let's do two of them just to see if it works. So we'll do one with the selected color is blue and then the other one that it's not. So if I hit resume, uh, that is correct. Color view, everything is good. So selected color is the binding. Let me just save again. And oh, I see what happened. Let me see. Okay, so there's a curly brace missing and another curly brace missing and another curly brace missing. So there's that. And now the error should go away. Boom. And we should hit resume. Okay. So it's probably breaking because here is missing the binding. So we're going to do selected color dollar sign. And then the next one we're going to say is selected color. And right now this will pass in. And if all works, we should hit resume. And you can see the first one is selected. If we hit the next one, nothing is working. Nothing is working. I wonder why that is. Okay. So we just have to go back into here and we set our color is selected, but we don't actually have any binding for that. So we just need to add the binding. So we're going to say selected color equals color space. Sorry, save. And then we go back to product detail. And now if I hit it, we now have a selection being made. So now we know each one that's being hit basically. All right. So we need to do the same thing for selected size. We just pass selected size into the size view. Uh, so we have that one and we have this one. And we're going to do selected size colon dollar sign, pass that through. And then we're going to jump into size view. And we're going to add the code we need there. And it's basically the same exact code we just did. So I'm just going to skip all of the fluff and minimize size view and paste it. Okay. So we have a button. We're going to say that the selected size is equal to size. Um, everything else is the same. We format the text so that it fits uh, the fraction uh, length. We have the um, check mark and we set the X and Y value there. Uh, so when we hit resume, now it's in the upper right corner. We also see that um, here we have the constant 9.5 showing as selected. So that's why it's working in the preview. And let me just look at color view and fix that one. So just in case, so we'll go to color view really quickly and just make a quick update just so that all of the stuff is working the same save and then go back to product detail. And now if I hit resume, now we have product detail and color both working, but you'll notice that color selects the black by default and size will set it once you click it. So I did both versions so you could kind of see how that works. And now all we're really doing is just fixing the padding 
and um, I'm not gonna really go over that. That's all just adding padding to the content, but I'll fix it now so you can see how that looks. So we will just make a global change to padding and you can go back and see how I did it in the code. So that's there and I have a second preview. And now if I hit resume, oops, what is it complaining about? Oh, product detail header, of course. So that is missing because I added a header in my other one. So we will just drag and put this into supporting views and hit finish. And now this takes a title and creates the headers individually for each of these sizes. And if I hit resume, all of this will now display like it should. So here we have everything indented and aligned correctly. On this side, everything is aligned correctly. And the scroller works where it, it shows off on the screen with padding and comes off. So now you can see how that works. And if we run it in the sim, we can see it displayed here. Um, and I'll just fix this one just a bit because I don't like the way it looks, but I'm not gonna nitpick while you're on here. So let's just make some changes to home view. And um, month view is not needed anymore. And I mean to make sure I change that in the project files before I push it. Okay, so then save and run. And now there's there, there's there, boom, boom, boom. Uh, there's still some little small things that I didn't do, um, like the headers. I will fix that in the completed file, but you get the picture. So everything that you're trying to do is, is working. Um, and you can like go back through and look at like the finer details and go at, at a, at your own pace to figure out what I did in each of the different sections. Um, and I will push that in the next five minutes. So as soon as this um, street live stream is over with, I'll um, go through the code and push it. So it should be up in the next five to 10. If you're watching this as a replay, it's already up there in the starter file that you pulled down. So that is where we are. So hopefully you gained a little bit of knowledge and you saw how um, even an experienced dev as myself uh, can struggle a little bit with the fact that um, SwiftUI and the structure of SwiftUI is really, um, it, can, it can be overwhelming a little bit if you're not used to all the curly braces. And so the idea is if you can refactor, refactor. Like as soon as you see something that you did in a design, take it, copy it, put it into a new file, and then bring it in, and then start with the small chunk of code. Um, I typically will try to, um, I don't go as far as I did in this particular live stream. Um, I would have refactored much, much earlier because when you have a Z stack embedded in a Z stack, embedded in a Z stack, now you're like, okay, where's everything? And I don't know where anything is. And that's really difficult and hard to get, to get through. So um, I really do appreciate your time and patience. And hopefully, like I said, you learned something. Uh, please, if you have or if you found something that you didn't know, please put it in the comments. Uh, I'd appreciate it. And I really do. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to show you guys some things. So if you have questions, please post them in. Um, but uh, otherwise, I am done. So I'd like to to just thank Aisha for um, saying awesome. I appreciate that one as much as I uh, really hate the <laughs> way it came out. It did work. Uh, Christian, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, looks like I got a comment from Daisy. Uh, pretty awesome. That's like your go-to word. Pretty awesome. Um, and Alanda said that uh, he said a lot, and that's where I was referencing a lot of the um, trying to refactor as soon as possible because it does get overwhelming. And so it's easier when things are more minimized and smaller chunks of code. So hopefully you got something from that and you saw me struggle and you see that it's going to happen no matter how long you've been doing it. It, it just it's the way that um, 
development is, especially when you're live streaming and people are watching, you usually mess up. So I'm not surprised by it. Um, anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm here to ask, and that's why I'm doing these live. Uh, so if you have a question, it doesn't even have to be pertaining to anything I covered. It can be any Swift UI question, but um, I'm here. Ask. Some of you I know personally, uh, some of you I don't. So I appreciate those that came that I don't know personally and those that did come, Daisy, Alandis, uh, Eli, thank you all for coming. Jeff, um, Aisha, and Christian. I hope I said your name right, Aisha. Um, uh, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. And on Wednesday, the new video will be posted for more Swift UI. Uh, basics in 100 seconds uh, and those will be regularly on Wednesdays around noon uh, time so just look out for it you sh if you're not subscribed to the channel please 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 do so um, it it does help me see that people are interested in my content so the more you uh, talk and tell me what you want the I'll start doing more content but I'm still new and I'm still learning so right now I'm just kind of a learning process but Hopefully you got something out of it. I really appreciate you guys again for coming. I don't see any questions. No one's popping anything in. So I'm going to just say goodbye, I guess. I'll wait another 30 seconds or so in case somebody changed their mind. But I appreciate all of you for being here. And uh, good night. Thanks, Alandis. Thank you.